Yep. So nice and simple to start off. It's the manager that has given you the biggest telling off, and what was it for? Cool. Um, biggest telling off. Oh, it might have been when we was at Southampton in the youth team. Um, I think the lads had gone out on a Saturday night. We weren't really allowed out then. Then he we'd come in on the Monday and he caught us being out, so we got a bit of a rollicking fly. Was that was that Paul Sturrock? Was it? No, this would have been like a, it was a first team coach, but right. He caught like the lads out, so we got a bit of a right. Yeah, you know, you'd be surprised how many people, when we ask this question, say that the reason they got the biggest selling off was going out on the lash. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, who did you support growing up? Arsenal. Oh, oh there you go. I've perfect got something choice. in common. Perfect. They're they're one of the teams I'd still look like. I look out for the teams who I've played for in the past. But if I was looking at Premier League teams, I'd obviously check you, but. I follow Arsenal most. It's because my brother supported him when I was young. I don't know why I support him, but it was just something to do with that. Did you ever go to Highbury? I did, yeah. I was there the last game. Oh, when were you? We played that. Yeah, I went down to that game, yeah. Oh, brilliant game to go to. It, it, yeah. Wigan won it. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, and then you'll be watching tomorrow, will you? I will be, yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> right, so next one. Best stadium that you've played at? God, um... I'd say Anfield. Uh, who did you Who did you play there for? It was just just out of interest. Um, Southampton. Ah right, yeah. I mean, did you, Did you get a result? I think we got beat two one. Um, so the best player you've played with? With, do you know what? I prepared myself for this. I thought you might ask this as well. Um, Lasana Diara. Oh, that's choice. that's an that's an in, that's an interesting that's an interesting goal, but I can see why you said it. He was an absolute beast, wasn't he, in midfield? Oh, unbelievable. Do you unbelievable. know what? Yeah. Sorry, just funnily enough, we did watch. Uh, you, you did a five side team for Huddersfield. He won in it. No, you picked him, but funnily enough, on the comments, someone put, uh, "I can't believe he's picked Diara over an Aaron Moy." Ah, oh, come on! But no, he was fantastic, wasn't he? Yeah, oh, he was frightening, frightening player. Mm. We might have a bit of an indication who you're going to pick for this one. Uh, but who's the best player that you've played against? I know, I know you think I'm going to say. Obviously, I've played against some good ones. But I'm going to say, in a, in a game, personally, when I fought in that game and I come off like, geez, uh, I'd say Tevez. Yeah. That, 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 obviously, we thought you were going to say Ronaldo. On paper, but do you feel like Tevez just he get on paper? Yeah, obviously I'd go for him, but just through that one game, thinking about it, it... he was a he was a brute when he Tevez. He was some player, yeah, fantastic player, and Jeco. To be fair, I could have put him in there. I can imagine him being tough to play against. You know, physical and yeah. When did yeah. you play against Jeco? Um, played. We play. Play. Who was it for? Barnsley, maybe we played. Man City in a cup. Right, yeah. Or Huddersfield. We played them both in the cup. We got beat five twice. Five Jacko off. score? Yeah. I think Tevez scored that trick. That's the game I'm thinking about when he scored that trick. Um, so you've played in some in some big games for some big clubs. What is the best atmosphere that you've played in? Um, probably the Leeds Sheffield United game. Yeah, a big Yorkshire derby with a lot yeah, riding on it. I can see why you said that. That was brilliant, yeah. Mm. And obviously, what was on the what the uh, what was on the line for the game as well. The atmosphere mm. was brilliant. What was the last concert you attended? Ed Sheeran. When when was that? This was a bit a while ago now. Um, I was at Huddersfield, fucking four or five years ago. Any good? Yeah, brilliant. Well, put was you that down your, as an Ed Sheeran fan. <laughs> was that yours or the was that yours or the wife's decision to, to go and watch that? Well, I think it was one of the lad's decision. He said he had two spare tickets, so I just said I will come. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, it was brilliant. No. Um, next one. What are your plans after you retire? Have you got any sorted? I'm doing I'm, I'm doing my coaching badges and stuff. Um, so I'm gonna get them all done and you know, hopefully. Fingers crossed. I've got a few more years to play yet. I don't feel like I'm, I'm, I'm quite finished. So I'll ride that out as long as possible until the body says that's enough. And then I'll see what opportunities are around the coaching. Uh, bit topical, this one. Uh, with the um, 
the news that broke in the week. What is the first thing you are planning to do on the 21st of June when hopefully all of the coronavirus restrictions have been removed? <laughs> well, hopefully that's not the weekend we go back to pre-season. <laughs> <laughs> See that falling on that weekend. I could be walking straight back into training. <laughs> that could that could be nasty. That that could be that could be quite brutal. That uh, worth could get worse time. That was the first thing I thought. That could be the weekend that we start pre-season. Surely the gaffer's got to give you a little few days leeway there. It's got to give us that weekend, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, it falls on a Monday, that. the 21st. I joking. We could be on that Monday then. <laughs> Normally around that time that we go back in. Straight down the pub after the good old that like the good old days after training. Yeah, I think that's the route, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have a dinner party and you can have three guests, dead or alive. Who are you having and why? Um I would go. I'd go Gaza. Um uh, don't have to be footballers. Any don't any have to person, be footballers. Yeah. Um I'll go David Goggins. Do you know who he is? No clue. Well, you can Google him after. Um, well, I'll, I'll give him a Google now, I'll say. Okay, get on him. Gaza, him, and I'll go Mike Tyson. That, that's a good shout. No one said Mike Tyson, yeah? yeah. I've just Googled Ultra him. marathon runner yeah. David Goggins. Oh, the guy's an animal. Oh, I think I have seen him, actually. You, you would have is heard it, of him or seen him somewhere. It, he runs like a marathon and then does the... The bikes, don't he? And then the swimming, it's all, all that in it. Yeah, no, I have seen him. Like the world record for uh, I think like pull ups in 24 hours or something. Jesus, yeah, it's, it's mental. So, uh, you know, we've we've seen the Robbie Williams video after the celebrations at Sheffield United. So, you know, hazarding a guess that you, you're partial to an alcoholic beverage every now and then. Uh, yeah, what is your go to right. beer? Um probably say if I'm, if I'm going to have a bit I'd have a Peroni oh we did have a, a bit of a guess at that yeah <laughs> um, we, we can't really afford Peroni as uni students so uh, is it any good yeah, it's not it's nice <laughs> no, you, can't, you can't go wrong with a Carlsberg special brew there you go <laughs> we have right. to drink we have to drink white lightning <laughs> on, a, on a budget <laughs> right next one again might have a bit of a guess at this one what's your favourite holiday destination Vegas Oh, perfect choice. I'll go, I'll, go, I'll go that with the lads and I'll go with the Mrs. Dubai. Everybody says Dubai. Yeah. Everybody. You know what? It's just because there's a little bit of everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could go out there and chill, take the kids. Or you, you could go with the lads, I suppose. I haven't been there with the lads. Like. I don't think it looks like the, the big drinking place, does it, Dubai? <laughs> Probably too many, too many rules. Yeah, I won't, I won't risk it personally. <laughs> uh, final question. If you were stranded on a desert island, which three teammates, past or present, would you have to keep you company? Dave McGoldrick, Richard Stearman, Kieran Freeman. We thought a few <laughs> Sheffield United players would be in there. Yeah, and because I don't know why, they're, they're probably the closest, I'd say, lads that I've met over the years. I've stayed in contact and we're in a little school group mm. still so they're probably mm. what I speak to the most he just comes uh, across Richard Stearman I don't know why there's just something about him I reckon he'd be a right <laughs> laugh so on the back of that who was like the 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 linchpin of that Sheffield United dressing room because obviously it was such a good dressing room who was like the main I'd guess Billy Sharp but... well, yeah, yeah, I think you would say like it's, it's Mr Sheffield isn't it? he's been there since mm. he's, he's gone all the way through it was the team was the dressing room was full of big characters. Though there was no one, I wouldn't say no one who everyone would like look up to all. Like everyone was on. Yeah. The side, but there was a lot of big characters in that dressing room. Who was the biggest joker? Um, Paul Coots was funny. Uh, there was there's a lot. This this couple of scousers in there were funny. Mark mm. Duffy, uh, John Lundstrom, um, Leon Clark's funny. <laughs> Do you, know Leon, do you know what? I would no dis, I would not guess that Leon Clark's the type of person to be like a bit of a joker, but yeah, that's what I mean. Like from the outside, I, I can see why people think you want, but once you're in that environment and you've got that sort of, sort of thing around yeah. you, people you just just get involved, like right. This this one's the, the big one. Yeah. What is your funniest football story? It's involving now, mate, Freddie Eastwood actually. I can't remember whose I can't remember whose car he'd done it to, 
but something happened to his car when he was at Carve. Um, I can't remember they did, whether they camouflaged it with loads of branches and trees and blah, blah, blah. When we come out of training, so we couldn't see his car. And he wasn't happy because Freddie liked his cars. So he said, like, I say, I'm not having that. So I can't actually remember the player, so I don't want to just say a random name. So he, he's got the lad's keys. He must have been injured. He's got the lad's keys and he's took his car down to like a, a local fish fish market and unscrewed the side panels in your car. So when you open the door, then bits there. Somehow he's managed to unscrew these off and he's packed it with fish. Oh, he's like the Gaza back. story. And uh, yeah, and fingered it back up and then brought the car back to train and left it and didn't say anything to anyone. And obviously I can't, the lad who's come back out and he's like, my car stinks, lad. my car. And he, he, obviously because he couldn't see it, he just didn't know where it was. So this car must have been honking for weeks. Oh, that's <laughs> that's grim. But it is quite funny. Right, so question number one, Martin, was who was your loan, sp- uh, sorry, who was your manager in your loan spell at Yeovil Town? Um, Russell Slade yeah that's correct yeah right, question number two you started the second leg of the 2006-7 championship player final for Southampton a four all draw on aggregate which went to penalties however who scored a last minute leveller for the Saints to take the game to extra time and penalties oh god I thought he was going to ask who was against then um, <laughs> was it was it Leon Best no, no. Mm. Gregor's Reziak. Ah. So against Derby? Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you, you've picked up a Coventry accent you have, Martin. I can, I I can tell. Yeah, definitely. I live in Kerry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question number three. In your loan spell at Charlton Athletic in 2008-2009, you were on the winning side only twice of the 19 matches that you played for the Addicts. Who were they against? And you get half a point for each. <laughs> Not a good, not a good ratio, though, is it? Uh, no. <laughs> honestly, I haven't got a clue. Couldn't tell you one of them. Doncaster Rovers and Ipswich Town. Jesus. See, if I'd have guessed then, I wouldn't even put them two in that league. Then. <laughs> right. Question number four, and hopefully a, a bit of an easier one. Yeah, go on. Chuck's an easy one. Yeah. Who did you make your commentary debut against? Oh, that's not an easy one. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. You you did play for them at some point in your career. Did I? QPR. Yeah, Barnsley. Ah. Oh. <laughs> right. This is an easy one. In the opening day, sorry, on the opening day of the 10-11 season, Coventry beat your former employers Portsmouth 2-0 at the Rico Arena. Who scored a brace for the Sky Blues that day? <laughs> an easy one. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy for you. Oh, my God. I said 10 years ago. No. Yeah. 10-11 season. First day. Jesus. Race against Portsmouth. Who was like that? Um, you said I was, play- I was playing for Carl? You was playing, I think. Uh, Freddie Eastwood. Correct. Yes. I oh. feel like he was... I feel like him and Marlon King were the only people who scored that season. Well, they, they, they were the two that popped into my head then. Right, question number six. Yeah. In, in the 11 12 relegation campaign, Coventry won uh, only one away game. And who was it against? So oh, we won one away game. Yeah, yeah. but it, it, trust in Alex. <laughs> thinking that. No surprise we got relegated, really, is it? One away game. Um... I'll help you narrow it down. We won 2 0, and Cody McDonald scored the winner. Did he? Derby. No, it's Paul City. Oh. Uh, question number seven. Who was the only Huddersfield player to miss a penalty in the playoff final shootout with Reading in 16-17? Question. I should definitely get this. Heffalo. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right, question number eight. You started only one game for Middlesbrough. Who was it against? Away. Correct. Remember, it was an absolute shocker. <laughs> um, a pivotal win in your promotion campaign for Sheffield United was a 1-0 win at Le- against Leeds at Elland Road. Who yeah. scored for the Blades that day? Basham. Correct. 
Yeah, and final question, number 10. You scored on your Luton debut in a free all draw with former club Borough, but which other two players scored for Luton that night? And it's half a point for each. James Collins, Sonny Bradley. Correct. Correct. That's a strong finish there, six out of ten. You're not bottom. Know, a bit easier than one to the end. Yeah, you're not bottom of the leaderboard, don't worry. Mark, I think Mark Little got four, didn't he? I think that's second, actually, six. Uh, so not a not bad going, that. Who's top? Uh, ben Pringle, I think. He's got seven and a half. Eight. No, seven and a half he got. Seven and a half, sorry. There was a bit of controversy. 